I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? For in all of you be still, or will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. It's good to see everybody here. And um, I was telling Morgan C. during our first service, we were having a conversation, and we celebrated our seniors this morning in um, 
back in our impact class, and we had cake, and it was exciting, and we were having a great time, and so I walked over to our preschool class to make sure everything was going okay there, and I asked him, I said, do you all know what a senior is? And one little boy raised his hand, and I said, yeah, what is it? He said, um, it's, um, and he didn't know what it was, so he said, okay, that's all right. So I told Morgan, I said, a senior, there's actually two categories, and whenever I'm prepping a sermon, I take into account both categories, seniors in high school and senior citizens. So this morning, we're going to be talking about footsteps, and footsteps are such an important thing when you really dig deep into what they can mean. And so we're going to be in John chapter 14 this morning, but before we get into our message, let us pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful morning you've given to us. God, we thank you that we can come into your house, that we can worship God, that we can give you the praise. Lord, we pray that you will just um, open our hearts and our minds this morning. Uh, Lord, may it be your words this morning through me. Um, Lord, just help us to take this and apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So as I said, we're going to be in John chapter 14 this morning. And we're discussing footsteps. When you hear the word footsteps, what comes to mind? Maybe you think of the sand, as we saw in the uh, sermon video this morning, people walking across the beach. Um, a lot of people go to that image because it's relaxing and it's just a comfortable time. But you're walking along the sand and you are taking footsteps. Maybe you're thinking about wood floors, if you've been in the back of the church, or if you have wood floors in your home or any business, when you walk across those wood floors, you can hear the footsteps of the shoes that are coming across the floor. Maybe you are thinking of a, a baby who takes their first footsteps, and that's such a precious moment. Or maybe, just maybe, you thought of what my sermon key point is this morning. As we take footsteps through life, what about the word legacy and future? And so the word legacy, it means a memorable contribution to a certain cause. If you leave a legacy, you are leaving a memorable contribution to a certain cause. And so let me give you this thought, and I want you to let this stay in the back of your mind as we go throughout our sermon this morning. With every footstep... You are working towards something in the future, but you are always leaving footprints behind each step of the way. So bear that thought in mind as we go through this morning. So let me give you a quick illustration here. So if I'm walking around the stage and I, I make several different paths, even if I just stood up here and as I'm walking back and forth speaking, the odds of someone coming up here and walking the same exact steps that I did without me having, you know, paint on the bottom of my shoes or chalk to where they could see my footprints, it's not very likely that they're going to get those same steps as I had in my pathway of walking on the stage. But, as in life, as we said, keep this in the back of your mind, we're leaving foot. And so we're going to look at John chapter 14 this morning. If you have your Bibles with you, you can go ahead and open up to there. We're going to start in verse 1. It'll be on the screen as well. And so the title of this passage says, Jesus comforts his disciples. Starting in verse 1, it says this, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. We're going to pause there for just a moment. Just within that first verse... In that first part, it says, do not let your hearts be troubled. That's a natural thing for our hearts to become troubled and worrisome. And we were talking with the praise team before the service, and we said the time that you're in trouble is when there becomes two sets of footprints. As long as they're one, that's okay, because that means that the Lord is carrying you, and he's taking the footsteps for you. And so Jesus is speaking here, and he says, you believe in God, believe also in me. That's our first point this morning. Belief in God equals belief in the Son. This files into, we're taking footsteps this morning. We're going to think of our points as footsteps as we progress through the message. 
And so belief in God equals belief in the Son, meaning that if you believe in God, then you also believe in Jesus, and you also believe in the Holy Spirit. That's where we get the, um, the idea of the Trinity, three in one. And so what Jesus is saying here is, if you believe in God, you can also believe in me because I am my Father come in the flesh. We know that Jesus was God in the human form. And so that's what Jesus is saying here. And then continuing in verse 2, he says, this is Jesus still speaking. He says, my Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. Verse 4, you know the way to the place where I am going. This is another comforting factor that Jesus gives to his disciples here. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? When we take that footstep and we make that decision to have full 100% belief, not just partial, because we know that it, with our belief and our faith in Jesus Christ, you're either all in or not at all. That's not a decision where you can be on the fence about. You have to have that full belief and faith in Jesus Christ. And so that's what Jesus is saying here. He says, listen, once you've taken that step of believing in me, I'm preparing a place for you. But he doesn't say in, in my house. He says in my father's house. There are many rooms. And so that means that there is room for you to believe in Jesus Christ and he is preparing a place for you. But as he is preparing a place for us, it continues in verse 3. It says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, here's the assurance right here. I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Look at this second key point for this morning, our second footstep. As Christ is preparing a place for us, we must prepare to go there. This is a two-way street. We take that footstep to believe in Jesus Christ. We make that decision to believe in Jesus Christ, the most important decision we will ever make in our life because it determines our eternity. But then we must also prepare to be with the Father. That means that we have something that we have to accomplish, something in God's will that he wants us to do to further his kingdom while we are here on the earth. And so as we go through, as we take these footsteps, that's where our legacy comes in. That's where we work towards the future and we begin to leave those memorable contributions to a certain cause. What's the certain cause? Belief and faith in Jesus Christ as we leave that legacy. And so then in verse 4, he tells the disciples, you know the way to the place where I am going. We're going to get ready to hear what is the way to get where Jesus is going. Where is he telling his disciples that he's going here? But I want to point out one more key thing here. Jesus says that if we have belief in him, he doesn't just say, you believe and that's it. He says that you get to go to the same place where I am going. That is so exciting. When we get that 100% belief, when we take that footstep, when we make that decision to believe in Jesus Christ, and we develop that legacy and we prepare to go where Jesus is, that's where the reward is. Things here on the earth the treasures that we think we have here on earth, the money, the wealth, those are great. But guess what? They're going to be here. Those things don't go with us. We have heavenly rewards that are waiting for us. And one of the greatest rewards is that we will get to be before the creator of the entire universe. But you got to take that footstep. So our first one, belief in God, is belief in the Son. And then as Christ is preparing a place for us, we must prepare to go there. In verse 5, the title changes here. It says, Jesus, the way to the Father. Did you catch that? Jesus, the way to the Father. Jesus is the go-between here. Listen what it says in verse 5. It says, Thomas said to him, Lord, 
We don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Listen to this, verse 6. It says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Verse 7, if you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And so Jesus gives this powerful response to Thomas. Now understand here that Thomas truly was confused. He truly was wanting to know, where are you going? What, what, how do we get here, Jesus? You're such a dear friend of ours. How do we go with you? And Jesus gives him that answer. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So right there in God's word, we get the answer. How do we get to spend eternity with Jesus Christ? We make the decision to have full 100% belief and faith in him and in the Father and the Holy Spirit as the Trinity. And so it says, if you really know me, you will know my Father as well. There's the second part to the answer of Thomas's question. He says, well, we only know you, Jesus, but you said that you're going to your father's house, so how, how do we make that connection there? How are we worthy, how are we able to go and be with the father as well? And he says, well, if you really know me, if you really have put your trust and faith and belief in me, then you already know my father as well. And then it says, from now on, you do know him, and have seen him. And this was further confirmation that Jesus said, hey, listen, I am the Father come in the flesh. And we're going to get further confirmation later on here. Our third point this morning, our third footstep this morning, we must walk with the Lord daily. In making this 100% commitment... It's not just, hey, one week after I've put my faith and belief in Jesus Christ, I'll live for him. That's not the case. When you make this commitment, when you've made the choice to take that footstep and made that decision to believe in Jesus Christ, you then live for Jesus Christ daily. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to be perfect, because if we were perfect, none of us would need to be here in church this morning. Because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and that's why we're here. Because we come together to grow together and further our belief in Jesus Christ, further our walk, further our growth in Jesus Christ. And that's what you should be striving to do daily. Every day when you get up, your hope, your prayer should be, God, help me to live for you today in my walk with you. Help me to maintain that close relationship with you. God knows that there are going to be points where we go way far away from him, but you know what is so precious about our Lord and Savior? We are his children, and just like a sheep that is strayed, just like if you had lost a child, he seeks us out and he says, Come back, my precious child. And he brings us back into his care. We don't leave his care. He just has to pull us back in because God knows that we are not perfect. Only through the righteousness of Jesus Christ are we saved and have that avenue to heaven. Continuing on in verse 8, Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Look at Jesus' response here. Verse 9, it says, Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Our fourth key point, our fourth footstep this morning, Jesus' authority is from the Father. And so Jesus is once again responding to Philip. And he says the same thing that he said to Thomas. He says, don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you for such a long time? 
And so it's not that Jesus is angered in any way. He's just saying, listen, you've got to realize who I am fully in the flesh. I am the Father. And he says, how can you say, show us the Father? He says, don't you believe I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? And then here's the further confirmation that Jesus gives. He says, the words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. So Jesus comes to earth and he is born and he knows what he must do to follow along with what God's plan is for us. And so Jesus says, even at the end here, he says, believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. And then he says, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. What Jesus had already accomplished here, he's saying, you've seen some of the miracles that I've performed. Let these be of evidence to you that my power isn't just from me, but it's the Father, that I and the Father are one. And that's exactly what Jesus says here when he says that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. And so Jesus is telling his disciples, he says, Jesus' authority, my authority, is from the Father. And so once we begin to realize that, then that decision to have full belief not only in God, not only in Jesus, not only in the, in the Holy Spirit, it becomes as one. It becomes easier because they are all a part of one another. And, and it's just ever so important here to realize what Jesus is saying all throughout just what we've already seen of John chapter 14, Jesus is giving comfort to his disciples. This is even comfort for us today. This is even assurance for us today that Jesus Christ is going to return. That as a believer in Jesus Christ, we have that blessed assurance, we all know that song, that Jesus is mine and that we are saved through the blood of the Lamb. We're almost done. We're going to continue real quickly in verse 12. It says, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Our fifth footstep this morning. We must believe in Jesus, do good works, and ask for things in Jesus' name in order to glorify the Father. Now, what does this mean here? Well, our main point here this morning has the footsteps all together here. Belief in Jesus Christ, not just partially, not just on the fence, not just, well, I think I believe, but that you truly believe in Jesus Christ and the Father as one, that you do good works. Now, not getting this confused that good works are the avenue to heaven because remember we just read that Jesus said that he is the only way to the Father. He said, no one comes to the Father except through me. So don't get that confused that good works is going to get you into heaven. It's through that belief in Jesus Christ. But then, as we said at another point this morning, that those good works help us grow and develop and further our relationship and growth in our daily walk with Jesus Christ. And then, look at this last part. It says, And ask for things in Jesus' name in order to glorify the Father. This can get confused as well. Because Jesus phrases this two ways here in uh, chapter 14. In, 13 and ver in verse 13 and 14, he says, And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Then verse 14, he says the same thing, just a little bit differently. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Now, in today's time, we take anything to be a relative term. But what Jesus is talking about here is anything that has to do with furthering the kingdom of God. Anything is not a new sports car. Anything is not one million dollars. Have you ever ran into anybody and said, 
or maybe you're at a restaurant or something and they say, is there anything I can get you? And they say, yeah, a million dollars. You know, they're, they're talking about your food, but people take different avenues. Well, that's what can happen here if you're not careful. This is anything that will further the kingdom of God, anything that will develop a closer relationship between you and the Father, the creator of the universe. And in asking in Jesus' name, that's also that he will provide for us what is suitable and right for our life, key point here, according to his will. According to his will. That doesn't mean that if we tag whatever we ask for with Jesus' name that we will receive that request immediately either. If you've ever prayed for something, you know that God is going to answer it according to what he knows is best and according to his will. Sometimes we tend to think that as Christians we've done our part and our belief in him and that a good work equals a prayer request answered? It's not the case. It may be answered. But God has a plan for each and every one of you this morning, sitting right here in Faith Baptist Church. These footsteps that you are continually taking every single day as you go through your walk and your Christian faith in Jesus Christ, God has a plan for it. This is applicable to these graduates. As they continue on, they've already left a legacy at their high school or in the community, and now they're continuing that on. Some people have developed a legacy already. Maybe they're a little bit older, and then some are just getting started. They're just taking those first footsteps and beginning that legacy. And that's how it is with our walk with the Lord. But wherever you are, we're following God's will. And just bear in mind that you're leaving those footprints behind. That brings us to our main point this morning. Listen to this. This is a question. This is something for you to take throughout the week and to ponder and, and make it applicable. And strive to answer this question. It says, where are your footsteps leading? And what are your footprints leaving? Where are, your footprint, where are your footsteps leading? And what are your footprints leaving? There are so many different avenues that this can be taken, such as for parents. Parents have developed footsteps for their children. We know that children look up to their parents. They say, well, what did mom do in this situation? Or what did dad do in this situation? You're leaving footsteps for your children. You are leaving those footprints behind and, and they're looking to see where you're going. Grandparents, same thing. Bill Gaither said one time, he said, you know what? He said, God allowed us to have such thing as grandchildren to give grandparents a second chance because we didn't do good enough the first time. But he said, he said, you know, he said, he said, we love having grandkids because we can take them for the day, we can take them for a weekend, and then we send them back to their parents. But he said, we still try to train them. We still try to show them what is right when they are with us. There is nothing more important than making sure that as these graduates continue on, as children continue on, as you continue on in your Christian walk with the Lord, that you have that firm foundation and that your footsteps are not your own, but that your footsteps are following the will of Jesus Christ. Because you are leaving that legacy. You are leaving something behind that you may think that nobody ever knows about. But guess what? They're going to say something. Something is going to be said. Whenever God calls you home, there's going to be something said. And, and, and we pray that it's something good. We pray that it's that, that you had a strong walk with the Lord. That your footsteps and the footprints that you left behind led in the right direction and were footprinted in the right area. As we think about this, it's ever so important that our footsteps are not our own, but that they're led by Jesus Christ and that we're following his will, and his way. The question this morning, where are your footsteps leading and what are your footprints leaving? 
Let us bow our heads this morning as we get ready to close the service. As we said already, there may be some believers that are still young in their faith. There may be some believers that are oh so spiritually mature that they just have so many things that they can share with others. But wherever you are in your walk with the Lord, how many ever footsteps you've taken, how many ever footprints you've left behind, it's the will of God that matters. It's that footstep, that decision that you've made to believe in Jesus Christ. And that's an ever so important decision because we don't know when the Lord's going to return. We don't know what his plan or will is for you or when he's going to call you home. But my prayer this morning for you is that your footsteps are leading a good life. As we have these graduates this morning, that you're providing that good example in your footsteps. And that you're leaving footprints behind that people will look at and say, oh, that was a wonderful person. They were such a strong believer in Jesus Christ. And that you are preparing to be in one of those many rooms that are being prepared in the Father's house. You are a child of God. And he cares for you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for your word, God. That we can study it, that it is here for us, our instruction manual for living out our walk with you. God, without you, we would be lost. It's through the righteousness and the blood of the Lamb, God, that we are saved. Lord, we pray that if there's anybody here this morning that hasn't taken that footstep, that hasn't made that decision to believe in you, God, that this morning will be the day that they decide to do that so that they can receive their rewards in heaven and spend eternity with you, God. Lord, we pray for these graduates as they continue on, God, as they've already taken footsteps, as they are taking a big footstep here, God, and going to college and into the real world, God, that you will just help them to follow your will and let them know that you are there carrying them every step of the way. Lord, we pray for every single person here this morning, God, as we go throughout our week and the rest of our life, God, that our footsteps will be according to your will, that the footprints that we leave behind will be a legacy that speaks of your name, Jesus, not of us. Lord, be with us as we go our separate ways today. Keep us safe. Lord, we thank you for each and every person here this morning, God. And we pray that everything that we say and do will bring glory and honor to you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being here this morning. God bless you. You're dismissed.